So let's give it a test try and see how it works. Now what I've got is some chicken compost and it's got a lot of wood chips in. So I'll just kick that through. I mean, it's already going through quite easily. So, there's all my big bits out. There we go, it's done quite nicely. I think that's done a quite good job. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi So my composting sieve is starting to fall apart. It's time to make a new one. So I'm quickly gonna make a new one out of some recycled materials and I'll show you how I'm doing that. So what I've got here, this is a piece of old uh, household furniture, it's from a cupboard. Rather than let this wood go to waste, we can use this, put it to some use, make its life last a little bit longer. So I'm going to start off by just knocking it, knocking it apart and getting the individual pieces of wood together. I mean this is a really simple thing for anyone to do. Don't need that piece, we'll save that for another job. Knock all these off. I mean, the last sieve that I made, it was made out of a piece of uh, one by one, so one inch by one inch. And it's done well, but we want something a little bit sturdier as well. See, the other one's lasted nearly 10 years, but let's make this, and hopefully this will last it equally as long. I mean, the only the problem with using the one by one is it's quite thin, and it's hard to hammer nails and get screws into to keep it sturdy. So rather than that, make something a little bit sturdier that's going to last a bit longer. So because of the shape of these, um, they cut at an angle. So what I want is square edges. So I'm going to take that angle off and I'm going to make some nice square edges on them. So the side lengths, for me, I'm going to use side lengths of about 50 centimetres. So that's that's a good size for you to get a good shake in. And the width is about three inches. Now the three inches of hold, what I've noticed with the old one, when I use the one by ones, it's quite thin. And because it's quite thin, that when you sift it, things fall over the top. Now this will hold things in a bit better. This piece of wood is a it's a metre length so I'm going to cut this exactly in half and all I'm going to do is I'm going to score it so I know where my line is Because these pieces of wood are quite wide, it can get hard on your hands to hold. When you're holding like that, it can get quite, it can be quite difficult and it'll hurt your hands. You'll start hurting on your thumb joint here when you're holding something that wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in a little groove for a handle. So with my 50 centimetre piece of wood, if I mark out exactly 25 centimetres, so I know where the middle is, and then I'll take a rough measurement of how much I want for my hand to be able to hold comfortably. So if I take a measurement of my hand, of how much space I want for my hand, comfortably I want to be, be able to work with about 18 centimetres of space here. So there, now I'm going to work out what the middle of the 18 centimetres is. So exactly halfway between 18 centimetres is 9 centimetres. So I'll put a line there. I'll put a line there. So to be able to comfortably make a good grip on it, uh, I want to come in about three centimetres. So measure this according to the size of your hand so you can get a good good grip on it. Last thing you want is to give yourself issues with things like arthritis, which can happen with this sort of thing. 
so that's roughly my shape I'll just use the other side of this to give it a nice straight edge so that's the shape that I want to cut out That's had a little bit of a sand, it'll, it'll be perfect. Now that's cut out, you can get a good grip on that a lot easier. So, what I'll do, I'll use that as a stencil to make my other shape on the other piece of wood. So, I'm just gonna use that as a stencil to cut out the outline of my to draw the outline of my shape, and I can just follow that. There we go, beautiful. I've got my two ends, and now that's gonna be, give me a nice grip so I, when I'm using it. If you wanted to be a bit more, if you wanted to be a bit more caring on your hands, what you could do is just give it a little sanding and get it nice and smooth, and then you've got some good edges to work on. So I'm going to take my wood drill bit, and I'm going to drill some pilot holes first of all. With this, it's always important to draw your pilot holes because you're working on the edge of the wood. If you just try and screw straight in, what will end up happening is the wood will split. Line it up. And then I'm just going to drill straight down and make my pilot hole. There we go. And I'm going to do the same on the other side as well. Now, let's get this screwed together. And the screw lengths that I'm using, so I've got one and a half inch screws and I've got three inch screws. And for the, for the thin bit, I'm putting in the one and a half inch screws and for the thick bit, that's where my, th this, that's where my three inch screws are going. So I drive, these drive this side in first. nice and sturdy. Again, get my pilot holes in again on this side. So get the screws into position first, as before. Line the screws up again with my pilot holes and in we go. There we go. Now that's a nice sturdy frame. So if you wanted to make this even sturdier, what you could do is you could put a little some braces into the corners, like those little bits of wood that we took out before, and just screw that into there and that into there. But because of the thickness of this wood, I think it's quite sturdy anyway. I think it's going to be quite good as it is. So now it's time to get my wire into place. So what I've got here is this is half inch wire. Uh, it's welded mesh. I mean, another thing you could use for this is hardware cloth. Hardware cloth is really, really nifty for this actually. I like hardware, the use of hardware cloth. But what I'm using is just a piece of wood, a piece of wire left over from the last time I made this. And this is just... You can get this actually in Poundland, 
so if you're in America for a, from a dollar store it just cost me a pound so so far my projects cost me a pound and probably about 50 pence for some screws let's go that way yeah so I'm going to place this on top and I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to staple it into place so if I start by folding it over onto this side first and I can use the lines on the wire as my, as my guide so there we go so I'm just going to use my staple gun and start putting these into place Now be careful when you're trying to staple and when there's knots in place. You don't want to staple into knots. And these staples, all I'm doing is just to hold them into hold it in hold the wire in place before I properly knock it in in a few minutes. This has been cut before. When you have bits like that, you can end up with those sticking in your fingers. So you could cut them off and try and get them flush, but what will end up happening is you'll never get it completely flush, and there'll be a tiny little bit that's going to always pr prick your fingers. So what I like to do is just bend them over and then that'll hide underneath the wood and it'll keep your fingers protected. So again I'm going to put a couple of staples in just to hold it in place. Do the same on the other side and if you notice I'm not going all the way to the end and I'll show you why I'm not doing that you see quite how I've got quite a long length left over on this side it's going to wrap up quite a bit and rather than wrap it up quite a bit what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it under fold it like a triangle and I'll fold it underneath final staples in. I'll get the staples in properly to knock it. Just give it a little knock with the hammer and get it nice and flat. And then I'll get the staples in to get it into proper position. So if some of the staples didn't go all the way in, just give it just give my whack with the hammer and make sure they're all the way in properly. And that way that wire is not budging anywhere so there we go there we have it a nice compost sieve with the hand grips and all made out of recycled wood it's cost me a pound 50 at max I like that <laughs> if you want to you can use a different size wire for this and make the holes a little bit smaller but I like this it'll be good for giving it that rough sift when I need to so I'm gonna leave it there for this one assalamu alaikum warahmatullah